Hey everyone, Jason here, aspiring entrepreneur and digital marketing consultant. And in this Facebook ads tutorial for Shopify, we're gonna be going through a simple three-step process for finding your ideal customers on Facebook. So this is the exact same three-step process that we use internally for our e-commerce clients over at my agency. And when you leverage the power of these three steps for yourself, you're gonna be able to reach profitability with your Facebook ads significantly faster because you will be trimming off the fat when it comes to targeting and actually targeting the right people right out of the gate. So go ahead and check out the links in the description to other helpful tutorials to being successful with your Facebook advertising and marketing your Shopify store, as well as a timestamp table of content. So in this video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run through the three keys that you need to know to be successful with your Facebook ads. Then we'll dive into my screen and I'll walk you through exactly how to use the audience insights tool to find your ideal customers and we'll wrap up with a little bonus technique for swiping your competitors' best ads because of course the next step is creating your ads. So I wanna leave you with a little bonus technique for creating your ads once you know the ideal people to target. So the first of the three keys is setting up your pixel and event code correctly. We'll get into a little more detail when I get to that bonus technique at the end, but you wanna make sure that you have your Facebook code and all of your event codes already on your site because as you run your tests, figuring out different audiences in the background, Facebook is going to be creating a audience of people who like your page, visit your site and add things to your shopping cart. And in the long run, those audiences are going to be a gold mine for improving the return on investment for your ads. So if you don't already have those set up, go ahead and pause this video, check out the link in the description to how to use Google Tag Manager and the Facebook event code to have conversion tracking on your website. The second key is to make sure that you start with two to three products that you're going to use as kind of openers or door busters to get people to your site. You definitely don't want to be making Facebook ads or going into this process assuming that you're going to be advertising everything on your store. Choose two to three products and really focus on those. That's how you make sure you are successful with your audience targeting and successful with your ad copy and images. And finally, the third key before we dive into my screen and walk through the audience insights tool and that three-step process is to just know that this is a process and it takes time. Your first thousand dollars really is just an investment in figuring out where your ideal customer is. I know there is a lot of marketing stuff and a lot of other YouTube videos telling you that you're gonna be profitable on day one or in the first week. And that's just simply not true. We've done this for I don't know how many clients and we hardly ever see a brand new store hit profitability with their Facebook advertising in the first week after spending less than $1,000. So just keep in mind that this is in fact a process. We're not gonna be hyping anything up here. I just want you to know that this takes real work. So with that, let's go ahead, dive into my screen and I'll walk you through those three steps. And the first step to being successful with your Facebook ads targeting for your Shopify dropshipping store is identifying the top three to five big brands in your space. So if you don't already have this list of kind of ideal brands or a model e-commerce site, then go ahead and go through this next step. If you already have those, you can go ahead and skip to step number two, niche down, table of contents in the description. For this example, I'm going to use a men's watch. And very simply, all I would do is I'd go over to Google and just type in top product name, brands. And so here I have a bunch of different articles and blog posts on the top brands for men's watches. And so if I were new to the space or doing this for a client, I would go ahead and I would read all of these. I'd get really deep and dive into what are seen as the top brands and why are they seen as the top brands. So I really understand the industry and the niche. For time purposes, I'm just going to click on the first one here and I'd scroll through and read this article, 30 top luxury watch brands. You definitely don't need 30, right? You might need 34, step number two, but here you wanna find the three to five kind of ideal, the ones that your store is aspiring to be like. So I'd go through and I would just scroll down this entire list and just comprehensively read about each one, look at each one. I might even go to some of their websites. So for time purposes, let's just go ahead and pick one. This number 10 looks good. I've never heard of this brand before. So we go ahead and copy that and we go over to our audience insights tool. And to get to that, you'd go ahead and navigate to your ads manager. You'd click on the three little bars at the top left and you'd come over under plan, 
audience insights, and that's how we get here. The only things you need to do before you start diving into the interests and playing with the different pages you can target is to make sure that you have the right country selected for where your customers are, and then the right age range for your customers. I'm setting it 25 to 50 because I don't expect a 18 or 19 year old kid to have, you know, three or 400 bucks to drop on a wallet. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in there to see if it's an interest. Now, not everything you paste in here will show up. And you do want to make note of which ones do show up and which ones don't, because if they don't show up in this box, you can't use it as targeting. So it might be helpful for ad creative or just general knowledge of the industry. But in terms of the actual ads, if it doesn't show up in this box, kind of useless for what we're doing. So now we got here an audience of 150K to 200K, perfect. So we're gonna to go to page likes. And because we're doing jewelry and watches, we're gonna be looking at number four and five. Now, if your product isn't in one of these categories, of course you can click see all to get a lot more. You can just come down here to page likes and you'd actually go through this exact same process. So either way, page likes, or if your product shows up as one of these categories, this is kind of where we're gonna go. So we're gonna look at jewelry and watches and then jewelry and watches store and jewelry and watches company. So the what we wanna do here is once we figured out what our top three to five brands are, we're ready for step number two, which is to start niching down. And this is where you find everyone. And this is the part that's going to take a few hours because you really want to find out what are all of the pages that you can target for your ads. And so there are a couple of things you want to do here. So the first step is you just want to click on all of these to make sure that they are within your sphere of offering that you're making with your product. And so to save time, I've preloaded a couple of them here. So what I would do is I'd go through this page and I'd see if this is targeting the same type of customer that I want coming to our Shopify store. Now it has over a hundred thousand likes. So that tells me that it's doing pretty well and scrolling through the content, it looks like it is a good potential. So I'd go ahead and add that to my list of potentials. I'd go do the exact same thing here. Also looks like a good list of potentials has over 350,000 likes. So I would think that these would be able, you'd be able to target these. And so what we do is we'd go ahead to make sure that we can target them now that we know that they're relevant is go ahead and highlight and copy. And then we're going to go ahead and paste it into this box. Yikes. Okay. So it didn't show up, which means we can't target it with ads, which means we can leave it on our industry list of Facebook pages. It might be good to go to get some ad creative or organic content ideas, but it's not going to help us with our Facebook ads. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. We'll try the ball watch company next. So I'll go ahead and highlight that copy and paste. Bam, it does show up. So we'll go ahead and click that. We will add it to our list of pages that we can target. And now we want to do the exact same thing. Now that we have the ball watch company, I'm actually going to go ahead and exit out the first one. And we're going to look at the jewelry and watches. We're going to look at jewelry and watches company, and we're going to go ahead and click on each one of these. And then we're going to see if they are relevant to our ideal customer. They're relevant to what we are potentially going to be competing with. If they are, we'd go ahead and copy it. And then we'd see if we can target it. So I'm going to copy, paste that in there. Yes, we can. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to remove the first one because we want to find new ones, right? We want a really big comprehensive list. And so go through here. We're starting not to get any new ones. And this is going to ha this can happen to you relatively quickly, especially if you're really, really niching down. So you can see we've actually seen all of these results before, but we could also go through these pages down here, but we've seen most of these page results already also. So once we start hitting a brick wall, as we're niching down, looking at all these different pages, making notes if we can or can't target them, the next thing we can do is use Facebook search and we can just search for our products. So I'm going to go over to Facebook and just search men's watch. And now here are all of the men's watches pages. And again, you'd click on each one of them. You'd see if they're relevant to your audience. You'd see if they're relevant to the type of business that you think you're going to be competing against or a page that you think your ideal customers would be engaging with. So you just scroll down this list. I'm going to cheat here because I know that this is a watch brand. I've heard of them before. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and I go back to my audience insights tool and I would paste it in the box. And of course we can target it. So we can target it. And now I'm going to go ahead and X out my old one. 
and see if I have a new list of brands to target. Uh, we finally have a new one. We'll scroll down here to page likes and we can go through uh, just looking at it. These are not really relevant to watches, but it's good to know what the audience generally likes. So once you have this list, and this is gonna take you, this will take you a few hours, but once you have your list going through all of these, you know what pages you can target, it's time to group them together into similar pages. And the criteria for similar pages is 110% up to you because by this time you are an expert, right? You've identified your top three to five brands. You've gone through who knows how many hundreds of Facebook pages. So you're pretty well versed and you have enough knowledge at this point to group like brands together. What is important though, is you make sure that your groupings are large enough for your ads to be successful and give you enough of a runway for you to scale your ads in the future. So you're gonna be making really two different types of groups. The first group is those big brands, right? And then the second group is gonna be your niche down. So for your big brands, they're probably going to be an audience size of over a million. For your niche groups, they're gonna be anywhere from 200K to maybe 750K, maybe around that million mark. But as, as soon as you kind of hit that million mark, then you probably want to create another group to test. And so the way you make sure that you have the right size is relatively straightforward because in here, they tell you right here up at the top how large the audience size is. So for this particular instance, MVMT watches, this is way too small of an audience to target. So let's just for simplicity's sake, please work. Let's go in here. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So we'd add this and now we're at 250K to 300K. All right, that's a better grouping. We only have two in here. We'd probably add three to four more. So we get around the 500K, you know, 750K range. And then that would be a group, right? And we'd group them like together and you would make those groupings for all of the pages that you can target. Now, of course, as you go through this, there's probably going to be a group of pages you think is more relevant than others. So that more relevant group is what you're going to want to start with. And that is all there is to it to finding your audiences. I know it seems really simple and a little contrived, like you really want me to just type everything into this box? Yes, that's exactly how, how you are going to be able to get your Facebook ads to profitability faster by doing more work and more research than your competitors because I can almost guarantee you 80 to 90% of the other people setting up Shopify stores, all they're doing is looking at those big brands. They're making these giant lists of a million plus potential customers and then just throwing Facebook ads at it and then wondering why it's not working. And so speaking of your Facebook ads, this leads me into the bonus technique I have for you because after you do all this, you will actually have to make some pretty good ads to get people to click to your Shopify store. And this is something I like to call the ad swipe technique and it's to pixel yourself from top competitors and other niche sites. And so the way you do this, we'll go back over here, and I've done this already, is you go to those top brand sites, you also go to those smaller brand sites, and you go to their page so that you become a part of their remarketing list. Now to do this, I recommend doing it in Chrome and recommend making sure that you do not clear your cookies while you're going through this process. So in Chrome, there is a handy dandy plugin called Facebook Pixel Helper. So you wanna use Facebook Pixel Helper to make sure that they actually have their Facebook pixel on their site. So if they don't have a Facebook pixel on their site, they're probably a terrible advertiser and you don't wanna be reverse engineering their ads anyway. And so this is kind of the first step. Now, chances are you may have heard of this technique before, but the next one is something that I have not seen anywhere else. So definitely this is an insider thing. And that is adding something to your shopping cart. So when you visit these websites, don't just browse around a little bit, actually add something to the cart, start the checkout process because the really savvy advertisers are going to have events for all of the different steps in the shopping cart. So you can see here, I love this brand because they do a really, really good job with this. You can see there are 13 different events being tracked on this page now that I've added something to the cart. If we go back to the first one, you can see there are only seven, but as soon as I add to the cart, you can see that they are tracking everything that I'm doing. And it's not only raising my hand, it's like screaming at the top of your lungs, I'm a customer that you should advertise to. And so you're going to start getting a lot of Facebook ads directed at you because you added something to the cart. Because some of these brands have such large remarketing lists, you may not see their ads, but this kind of 
is a great way to almost guarantee that you're going to see some sort of ads from them on Facebook. So all you have to do is go back to Facebook, just start browsing. Sometimes all we do is after we do this, we wait an hour or two, then we go to our Facebook and we just keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling and ads from these brands will start to show up in your feed and all you have to do is take little screenshots of them and now you have a great swipe file of what other successful brands are doing with their Facebook advertising. So not necessarily directly related to setting up your audience, but it is a great technique for that next step. And speaking of that next step, make sure you click the link in the description to a video that walks you through how to create your ads and begin running your Facebook ad campaigns. So thank you so much for watching. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe because over on the channel, I'm documenting the entire process of what it takes to build a online business from scratch. And of course, being successful with your Facebook ads, just one small piece of that bigger picture of being successful. Make sure you check out the links in the description to get your Facebook pixel conversion and event code set up correctly using Google Tag Manager, along with a comprehensive playlist of everything you need to know to being successful with your ads for your Shopify store. Comment below if you have any questions, hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, keep building the business you love. Take care.